Bros and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today, we are playing around with tofu. So you guys know I love tofu, okay? If you haven't seen my tofu video, well, I think that video almost has a million views. Go watch it. Um, I basically talk all about tofu for like 30 minutes. It's fantastic. It's kind of like a beginner's guide to tofu for people that have no idea what to do with tofu. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link that down below. So today's video, I wanted to show you guys three more recipes using tofu and all three of these recipes, I'm using a tofu hack. One of my favorite tofu hacks, in fact, which is basically freezing the tofu, unfreezing it, and then using that to flavor the tofu and also using it as a way to change the texture of tofu. And also, I want to make this kind of a little bit more of an interactive experience, if you will. I know that a lot of food YouTubers or food bloggers would test out the recipe like, you know, a few times, perfect a recipe, and then show the final product that's been perfected. And that's maybe the best way to do it, but I am, you know, lazy, okay? And I don't, you know, I don't have time, okay? Ain't nobody got time to be sitting in the kitchen and testing out recipes all day long, okay? I got things to do. So what I usually do is I just kind of film the recipe, usually the first time, you know, I make it. So I have it in my head and then I film it. Like 90% of the time, it works out. You know what I'm saying? And it worked out for all these. But there's always a few little things that I kind of want to tweak. Maybe next time I want to try things a bit differently. So I thought in this video I'm going to run through some of the things that I would do differently. I'm going to show you guys what I did. And then at the end I'm going to tell you what I would have tweaked, what I would have done differently. Because, you know, cooking isn't, it's, it's not going to be perfect. I'm always learning something new. So maybe you can learn from, you know, some of the mistakes that I made. And so on and so forth. Before we get started with the recipes, today's video is very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. If you guys don't know, Skillshare is is an online learning community for anybody that wants to learn something new or brush up on an existing skill. Whatever it may be, Skillshare probably has a course for you. They have thousands of different classes on so many different topics, including entrepreneurship, business, marketing, photography, videography, anything creative. I mean, just so, so many different courses. So the course I'm taking right now is called DIY Cinematography, Make Your Video Look Like a Movie. This is taught by a filmmaker, cinematographer, and director, Ryan Booth, and he gives tips on the best way to shoot video given the space that you have. Courses like these are really helpful for me because of what I do here on YouTube, obviously, and because I'm super interested in video making without using super complicated, fancy equipment. And I also like the fact that a lot of the courses are really short, to the point, and easily fit into my busy schedule. With Skillshare, you can learn tips and skills from professionals in their field for a really low cost of only $10 a month. But today, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box below. Make sure you click that link below to claim your free trial. After that, once again, it's only $10 a month. So if you are someone that likes to learn new things and also learn in the comfort of your own home and learn at your own pace and not spend too much money, Skillshare is the perfect Perfect place. So once again, check out the link down below and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's move on to the recipes. So as always, you guys, I will have a blog post with the written recipes linked down below. So first, I'm going to show you guys the freezing tofu hack, which we're going to use for every single recipe. So what you want to do is I like to cut up the tofu into pieces like this, kind of rectangular, almost steak-like pieces, and then I throw it into the freezer. Now, I want to freeze it overnight so that it is completely frozen, and then you can thaw it out either by, you know, just leaving it out, but that takes way too long. So I like to just microwave it in about 30 second to one minute increments depending on how strong your microwave is and then just kind of squeezing out the water as I go when you do this it really changes the texture and it just kind of changes the composition of the tofu I don't know exactly the science behind it guys but basically it makes it really easy to squeeze out the water of the tofu if you try to squeeze out the water like this without freezing the tofu it would definitely break easily and crumble but as you can see it's staying intact pretty well also you can squeeze out a lot more water than you'd be able to if you didn't freeze it so what this does is it changes the texture of the tofu 
tofu so it becomes more of a meaty or fishy texture and it also creates air pockets because you're squeezing out a lot of water so that allows space for a lot of flavor to get soaked up so i like to do this with medium firm tofu and that's what i'm using in this video because i find that when i do this with medium firm tofu the uh, consistency becomes very flaky and kind of soft but kind of tender but if you want more of a firm texture you can also do this with firm or extra firm tofu so i would try it out and see what you like best i think everyone probably has a different preference all right so for this first recipe i really really enjoyed it i literally ate the whole thing <laughs> i was planning on like eating half of it and then eating the rest later but ended up eating the whole thing no shame First thing I did was make a creamy sauce by creating a roux. And if you don't know, roux is basically cooking flour and fat together to create a thickening agent. It's a great way to make a creamy sauce and it's super, super easy. So here I'm doing this by using vegan butter as my fat. You can also use oil instead if you'd like. So I'm adding that into my pan heated at medium high heat. Then I'm going to add in some minced garlic. Now this step isn't necessary for the roux, but I added in the garlic because garlic is life and do I ever use any other ingredient I'm not sure so after I add in that garlic I'm gonna cook that for a couple of minutes then I'm going to mix in some white flour now once you mix that in this should thicken up very quickly and look kind of crumbly and at this point you can add in your non-dairy milk and I'm using oat milk but you can use whatever you'd like and I'm just using a whisk to stir quickly and this should thicken up into a nice creamy sauce very fast. It should be very smooth, nice and creamy. Just whisk it, whisk it well, okay? So at this point, I realized my sauce was a little bit thicker than I wanted. So I'm adding in a bit of water as well as some vegetable bouillon paste. This is basically like a veggie stock. And um, I talk about this step a little bit later and I'll tell you what I would have done differently next time a little bit later. But here I'm just using a whisk to just whisk everything to make it nice and smooth again. Once I got the consistency that I wanted, I just took the pan off the heat and then I brought in another pan. And here I'm just adding a little bit of vegan butter onto the pan so I can easily cook the tofu. Now I'm just going to create a very, very quick marinade. Now I wanted to make this a lemony tofu dish. So I have some fresh lemon juice and I'm also going to add in some basil here into the lemon juice along with some black pepper. And we're just going to mix that well with a fork. And onto the pan on medium high heat, we're gonna add in our tofu pieces. Now, once again, these are the frozen tofu pieces that have been thawed out and squeezed out. And then on top of each tofu piece, I'm going to add in some of this marinade. So I'm just doing that with a spoon. So I kind of evenly distribute the marinade. So initially I like to cook the tofu on each side for about three minutes or so at this point. And then if I want it to be cooked a little bit more, then I'll just flip it a few more times until I get the brownness that I want, the golden brownness that I want on each side. Once I was done cooking the tofu to my liking, I turned down the heat to a low and then I just poured the sauce over the tofu. To be honest, I wasn't really sure what I was doing at this point, but you know, it still tasted really good, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like trying to saturate each piece of tofu here to make sure all that creamy sauce is, you know, well soaked into that tofu. And then I took some kale because there was so much sauce, so I needed to definitely like, you know, add something else in there. So I just took some chopped up kale and added that into the sauce. Once I added the kale and mixed in the sauce, I covered the pan with the lid to just allow the kale to cook very quickly and allow all the flavors to just kind of, you know, melt together. What? What am I saying? I don't know. And once you're done, of course, you can add some salt and pepper if you wish, and you can plate it. And that's pretty much it.
the one thing I would do differently is number one for the roux I would probably use only one tablespoon of flour to make a thinner sauce from the beginning rather than such a thick sauce So the reason why I had to like add the water and the vegetable stock is to thin out that sauce But I wouldn't have to do that if I didn't add as much as much flour in the beginning I, I have notes here Okay, so the second thing I would do differently is that instead of adding the veggie stock into the cream sauce to thin it out Instead, I would then add the veggie stock. I would add that into the marinade for the tofu So along with the lemon juice, I would also add in some of that um, veggie uh, Veggie bouillon or maybe a little bit of veggie veggie stock if that's what I have so that I would marinate the tofu a little bit more and then use the cream sauce as kind of more of a topping. I think that would flavor the tofu a little bit better. Yeah, that would just allow the flavors to soak up into the tofu a little bit more and then the cream sauce could be used as a nice like topping with the, uh, with the tofu steaks. Now the cream sauce, oh, absolutely fantastic. Heavily, heavily recommend trying this out. So good. For this second recipe, you'll need some vegetable broth. I'm just taking some warm water and mixing in my usual better than bouillon vegetable base. This is what I used for the previous recipe as well. So basically, this is how I make vegetable stock. Then into that same bowl, I'm adding in some tamari or soy sauce, a simple vegan friendly barbecue sauce. I'm using this cheap one right here because I'm cheap. And let's mix that really well. Oh, and we're also going to add in some garlic powder. And then I have the tofu pieces in a container here. So I just poured in the sauce into the tofu pieces. Now I should have probably let this marinate for a good 15 to 20 minutes or maybe even longer to let the sauce and the tofu make love. But I really didn't wait long at all. And um, I mean, that really is one of the great things about this hack, uh, this freezing the tofu hack, because the flavors do get soaked up very quickly compared to if you didn't freeze. So you actually don't need to marinate for that long. Although I probably still would next time because it still probably makes a big difference in the flavor. So let's heat up a little bit of oil onto a frying pan on medium high heat. And once that's nice and heated, we're gonna add in our tofu pieces. So once I added all the tofu pieces, I realized I had a bunch of marinade left. And so I decided to pour that on top of the tofu. Now, in hindsight, <laughs> do you see how much I'm learning in hindsight, you know? In hindsight, I would probably have allowed the tofu to cook first and then added the remaining sauce on top. But you know, you live and you learn. So because of so much marinade, it took a while to cook up this tofu. I would say I probably cooked it on each side for about five to six minutes. I just kind of kept flipping until I got, once again, the consistency that I wanted. So for some more flavor, I'm just adding in even more barbecue sauce on top of each tofu at the very end here. And that's pretty much how I made this barbecue tofu. Okay, so for the second recipe, it was honestly really delicious and I would definitely make that again exactly the same way. But next time, what I'm going to try to do is I would actually pan fry the tofu first before adding the sauce. So what I would do is pan fry the tofu with a little bit of uh, oil, brown it on both sides, and then turn off the heat and add the sauce on top and allow the sauce to kind of like soak up after the tofu has been cooked. So that's actually a cooking method that I use, you know, all the time with unfrozen tofu. So I would just cut up like extra foam tofu, cook it up on the pan first, brown it, and then add the sauce. So I'm gonna try that next time with this freezing the tofu hack and see what it does. Another thing that I might try next time is actually using firm or extra firm tofu for this particular recipe. I just feel like a firmer texture might go even better with the barbecue sauce. This final recipe is possibly my favorite one. This is very similar to the tofu fish steaks I showed you in my previous meal prep video, which I'll link below. I made a few tweaks to make this slightly different. And even though this might be my favorite recipe, it also was the recipe that I screwed up the most. So I'll show you guys. So first to create the marinade, instead of using lemon juice, I used lime. And then I added in some white vinegar, soy sauce, garlic powder, onion powder, dry basil, pepper, and kelp powder. 
Then I decided to add in a small handful of chopped cilantro. And let me tell you guys, as soon as I did this, I pretty much regretted it immediately, but more on that later. Then in a container, I have the tofu pieces lined up and I'm going to pour spoonfuls of the marinade on top of each piece of tofu. And I did let this soak up for about 15 minutes or so. And initially I had this great big plan to bake this in the oven and that just did not work out. All right, so this did not work out the way that I pictured. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pan fry it. And next time I might add the cilantro at the end instead of like putting it in the marinade. I don't know. So after failing the baking process, I took it back to the pan and adding a little oil and then just pan frying the pieces until they were cooked to my liking. And I mean, even though this took a lot longer than it could have, in the end, the tofu still tasted very, very good. And if you're missing some sort of grilled fish uh, taste, then this actually, I think, you know, replicates it pretty well. All right, so for this third recipe, I'm sure you've already seen, but uh, the baking of the tofu just did not work out for me. I really wanted the outsides to be really browned and nicely like seared, and baking clearly just doesn't do that uh, because it was too wet. I mean, <laughs> go figure, okay? I really wanted to see if I could bake it uh, for those of you that might be trying to avoid oil, but I realized that pan frying it adds very little oil, like it's really not that much, so I wouldn't be afraid to add a little bit of oil. A, it's gonna save so, so much time because baking Baking takes like forever and B it just didn't brown when I was baking because it was just too much water content or too much like liquid and another thing that I would definitely do differently is not adding the cilantro in with the marinade and just instead topping everything with cilantro at the very end because the cilantro just kind of like I don't know I don't know it just didn't look pretty okay so I would add the cilantro at the very end just as a nice topping rather than um, adding it into the marinade so yeah <laughs> Another thing that I might actually try next time would be to pan fry the tofu first, then add the fried tofu onto a baking tray, pouring the marinade with fresh cilantro on top, covering it up and baking it, and maybe that would help soak up the marinade even more. I don't know. Maybe that's just a waste of my time. <laughs> I'm not sure, but maybe I'll try it next time. All right, you guys, so those were my tofu recipes and what I would do differently with the recipes next time. Let me know if you enjoyed this sort of format where I kind of talk you through and, you know, tell you my thought process. I feel like this could be helpful for a lot of people. You know, you learn something as you cook and sometimes you think in your head that something might work out, but then it doesn't. And, you know, it's nice when somebody tells you before you try it, I don't know. Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, of course, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe for more vegan plant-based recipes. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to grab your two free months for free <laughs> and try them out. Link is down below. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video.